Well, good morning and welcome to Cincy Lifestyle, this Monday edition. You know, Clyde, it's kind of windy outside, so this is a time where I am glad that I am coming to you from my home. Why, Mona? <laughs> <laughs> it's not like I don't know, but I just want you to share with our viewers. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Because my hair, right? Yeah, you're right, okay. Right. <laughs> there you no, go. My hair and wind do not go together at all. <laughs> uh, actually, I don't know. Why don't you step outside for this segment and, and then come back and let's see. <laughs> Not a chance, not uh, a chance. Well, well, good morning to you, and, and I hope you had a great weekend, yeah, rain I and did. all. I did. How was your weekend? Did you stay busy? My, my weekend was fine. Yes, I stayed busy uh, doing some organizing and stuff around the house. Um, there was plenty of busy in our house this weekend. You know, as we're, as we're um, forced to stay kind of cooped up a little bit for the time being, we discover just how creative our teenagers can be when they put the phone down. And so, <laughs> so my 14 year old got bored, just got flat out bored and decided on the spur of the moment, I'll make oh. some holiday cookies. And that's what oh, she did. Oh, those are gorgeous. They are, and they tasted really, really good. She's a great baker. I'm, oh I'm, my goodness. I'm very happy she has, found, she has found a skill. And then last night she made some, some biscuits, so, you know, she Ooh, just. Oh, that she, sounds delicious. Wow, right. she's really talented. I mean, you, she could sell those at a bakery. Those she are could. really good looking. She absolutely could. College fund. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> well, you know what? I ventured out on Saturday oh, to go my. to Kroger. Yes, I did. Thank but goodness I was the wind dressed wasn't the blowing. Occasion. Right. No, even if it was, I had my hat on. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and I ventured out to Kroger. It was um, great. I had, you know, I was dressed with my mask. I had on gloves. I did the whole bit. But I was, and I was only doing pickups. So I didn't even go inside the store, but I just wanted to be overly cautious, you know, Clyde. And then on my way back, I saw this long line on Montgomery Road. And I just couldn't believe it. it was like a mile long. Guess where they were going on Saturday? No. And remember, Sunday was Easter. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, cemetery? No. Honey baked ham. <laughs> the honey baked ham store. <laughs> it was a mile long down Montgomery Road. <laughs> wow. Wow. That is wow. Well, right. Amazing. That that is amazing, and I'm I'm hoping you had a good Easter, and that everybody else had a good Easter and Passover and and uh, that whole uh, series of of events that we've celebrated in the last week. Hey, got a got a question for you. Have you ever wanted to learn a new language? Maybe find out more about your family tree. Perhaps you've been trying to cook more, but don't you know just don't know where to start. Well, you can get all these services at the library. That's right, the library for free. And right now I want to welcome Gina Stegner with the Kenton County Public Library uh, to talk about some of the stuff you can get there. Gina, thank you for joining us this morning. Um, the, the, you know, clearly you're at home now, which is yet another sign that the library is physically closed. But there's still nevertheless some stuff to do in connection with the library online. Tell us about some of what you're doing on Facebook. So we're having Facebook Live programs. We offer at least one program every day. This morning we had yoga. Uh, we Later today we will have a how-to program where um, Ms. Perry will teach you how to make your little high spy. Um, and we're doing things like this every single day, trying to keep kids busy and also adults. Okay. So, okay. So you've got something called creative bug. I understand. Tell us about that. Creative bug is this really cool new, new to us application that we have on our website. If you go to our website, you'll see it on the homepage. It will actually take you step by step through craft projects, cooking projects, think of and it's for all age levels and all um, different skill levels so you know a lot of the stuff you probably already have at home and be able to use that to be able to create a little something for everybody there a little language a little opportunity to brush up on languages or to learn a new one too right 
Yes, so we have some great um, language learning programs on our website, and uh, you can, I think there's at least 20 different languages that you can learn with the website for free. Um, you do need your library card number for some of these programs, but you can apply for a card online and get it right away. You don't have to live in Kenton County, so no big deal. Um, also, Wednesday, so we're going to be having um, Spanish story time, so you can also uh, participate in that at some point. Okay, one more time what that was because because it faded out just a little bit. This Wednesday, you're going to do what again now? Spanish story time. So it'll be story time in Spanish. And kids and adults can learn a little Spanish while doing story time. Okay. All right, we got just a little bit of time left, but e-books uh, are available as well, and music is, uh, is available as well, right? Yeah, you can check out and download, stream ebooks, music, and movies from our website at no charge. All right, let's get folks to that website so they can talk to a librarian or get more information. Yes, kentonlibrary.org, and you can even chat with a librarian. There's a button that says chat, and you can talk to them and ask all your reference questions. You guys have made it so easy, Gina. Thank you so much for talking with us today. Thanks for having me, Clyde. With spring now in full swing, chances are you're looking to revamp the outside of your home. Well, one easy way to do this is by adding a flower box. But what if your windows aren't a standard size or you want to add a little more personality and pizzazz than what you can find in the stores? Well, that's where our good friend John Denny from Woodcraft comes in. John, thanks for being here. Thanks, thanks for having me, Mona. So we're making a flower box today. Mm. All right, what do we need to make this? Well, starting off, the wood is cypress. We're going to need any, any outdoor wood. Mm -hmm. outdoor, uh, cypress is great. It helps to inhibit uh, a rot. Um, there are other cedar, white oak, different woods, but cypress is a very good lightweight if you're going to mount it on, on, your, on the wall of the outside of your house. Um, uh, and then we're going to use some stainless steel screws since it is going to be outdoors. You know, that's so you need stainless steel, mm -hmm. so they will fare the weather. Okay, all right. So tell us how we get started. Um, we're we're going to we're going to use pocket holes. Okay. And by that, what what I mean is we're going to drill some holes on an angle, and we're going to hide them on the inside and on the underneath, so you have a nice clean look all the way oh. around the outside of your flower box. Okay. So now we're going to get. Now I put. I did put an X on this. I don't. I. I'll admit it. I've. I've drilled holes on the wrong side of the wood before. Oh, okay. So it's all right. a little we'll prayer. More. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so you're going to do that one and that. One. All right. We're going to take the drill out. Mm-hmm. And put this screwdriver bit. Oh, in. Okay. It's a, it's a square head. Oh, right. A square. Oh, a square head. Oh, because they're square head nails. That makes sense. Yeah. So this can be something a family could do as long as there's an adult to do Oh, most do definitely. The, yeah, so you can do with your kids. So this is a good family little project. I think so. Or a spring project. Yeah, you can build this, you know, it's April, so while the April showers are going on, and get it all prepared for the May flowers. All right, so the degree of difficulty for this, what, one, a scale of one to 10? A five, maybe. Okay, okay, um, that's good. I then, think we can do a five. Oh yeah, and then the nice thing about this is, this, this type of joinery, you build a flower box, it's the same thing you could build a coffee table with, okay. the, with the pocket holes. Oh. Now what we are gonna do, we're going to take this handy dandy little clamp here. And that's a clamp. And we're going to hold this. And then we're going to put some I'm screws gonna in here. I'm going to turn this your way. So then this is going to be our flower box. Can we personalize these? Oh, very easily. You can paint them. You can uh, put appliques on them if you want. There's little wooden appliques. So what um, kind of paint or stain would we, we use on this? If you wanted to leave it natural, I would just go with an outdoor oil. Okay. Um, any outdoor rated uh, stain would, look, would work just fine. Okay. And I'm just envisioning this, too, with beautiful flowers for the spring 
all lined up in here mm -hmm. and decorated. John, where can people get more information and come see you and learn how to make this and other things? Come to Woodcraft. We're up by Tri County. We're up in Tri County at 11 7 11 Princeton Pike um, uh, in the old Princeton Plaza across from Tri County Mall. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. And if you need a drill instructor, I'm here for you. <laughs> All right. Thanks, John. Thanks, Mona. Spring is here, and while it looks sunny and beautiful outside, a local designer is making you feel bright and shiny as well with her new spring line. And right now, I want to welcome Mallory Muddiman, the owner and creator of Mallory Kate Style. Mallory, thank you so much for talking with us today. Thanks, Clyde. It's a pleasure. You know, we've talked about this before, but share with us a little bit of what inspired you to create your own clothing line in the first place. Oh, well, I've always wanted to be a fashion designer. I started making my Barbies clothes when I was very young, and my mom taught me how to sew. So after college, I decided what better way to bring my vision to life than to start a business for myself. Sounds like a great plan and a great idea. So tell us a little bit now about your new line. So our new line is inspired by Connection, which is a little perfect now that we're kind of spread apart. Um, so it's inspired by hope and connection in the world. It's got a lot of rainbow prints and we have some daisy prints. Um, it's going to be a very joyful collection. Well, I was going to ask you about that. You, you shared with what inspired you while you were creating this. Uh, how does that play out in terms of what people will see when they buy your product? Oh, they're going to see some really happy clothing that they're going to be really excited to put on, especially with the current climate. Okay, uh, which gets to my next question was how you want people to feel uh, about what they, what they buy and then therefore choose to wear that you've designed and made. Our goal is always for, well, we only make women's clothes. So for women to put on an outfit that we've made and for them to feel like the best most themselves version of themselves. Okay, so is there a is there a color scheme or theme that predominates that's popular this year or that predominates in your line? Well, for this season we chose a rainbow print fabric so we've got all the colors this season. But on the runways um which have been a little weird with the disease, but um, the runways have had a lot of really bright, fun colors coming up, too, so. Okay, all right. So let's get people to find out more about uh, you and what you've pulled together for them this season. How can they contact you and see Mallory Kate Style? So they can follow us on Instagram, at Mallory Kate Style, or they can go to MalloryKateStyle.com. Our new line will be available on the 20th. All right, that is great, Mallory. Thank you so much for breathing a little color and inspiration into our lives. Thanks, Clyde. Well, have you ever wondered where some of our more common things come from? Well, coming up here on Cincy Lifestyle, we're going to let the cat out of the bag on a few of the idioms to tell you. Then we go behind the counter at a local state shop. Follow Master Engraver Tito. Welcome back. You know, for people learning English, idioms or old sayings can be confusing. What does it mean when someone says, I'm on cloud nine? Well, just as confusing is how these idioms came about. Well, today we're going to share the origin of some old sayings. And when we let the cat out of the bag, you'll say, who knew? Let's start with letting the cat out of the bag. It finds its roots in 18th century street fraud. Suckling pigs were often sold in bags, and a popular scheme was to replace the pig with a cat and sell it to an unwitting victim. Who knew? Of course, a cat in a bag would not make a good gift, but don't look a gift horse in the mouth either. This saying comes from the fact that horse's gums recede with age, leading to longer teeth. A common way to inspect a horse's worth is to check its mouth, hence the phrase. Receiving a horse as a gift and immediately inspecting its teeth was considered distasteful. Who knew? 
When my mother caught me saying something distasteful, she reminded me to mind my P's and Q's. Who knew this phrase dated back to the 17th century when pubs served beer in pints and quarts? If a patron was getting unruly, the bartender might warn them to mind their P's and Q's. Now the term simply means to mind your manners. And minding your manners is just one way to stay on the straight and narrow. Today, that phrase generally means to stay out of trouble, but the original phrase is actually biblical in origin. Who knew? Matthew 7, 13, and 14 describe the gates to heaven as straight or small and the way to eternal life as narrow. Now, the narrow road suggests that some people will come close but no cigar. That phrase originated from when carnivals used to give out cigars as prizes, so almost winning would get you close to achieving a cigar, but not quite. That's really interesting. Thanks, Clyde. Well, you may think the art of hand engraving is a skill of the past, but one shop is proving that isn't so. Tony Gilson, the owner of Gilson's Engraving, has trained with some of the best engravers in England and has been producing heirloom gifts for about 50 years. Well, we went behind the scenes to find out more about this art form. The, the hand engraving, I, I learned that in... Um... Um, 1955, I was about to be drafted. I'd finished high school and done pretty well in high school, but I had no uh, impulse to go to college at all. Because in those days, you really didn't, it wasn't much of a consideration in England, especially. My dad had a friend who had an engraving shop, and uh, he, they said, Why don't you come along and see what we do? So I went there, not even knowing what it was, and um, started there. Did a three year apprenticeship there and I, I got first prize in hand engraving my senior year. Very proud of that. <laughs> Tony was drafted during the Cold War, but quickly after made his way back into the business, but as an executive, not as an engraver. It wasn't until 10 years after moving to the States did he open Gilson's. Over the years, the business continued to evolve, adding machine engravers and booking large clients like Children's Hospital, Kroger, and UC. Tony himself, however, keeps the art of hand engraving alive. You, you have to be artistic to some extent. I'm not an artist, but I, I, can, uh, I can draw. And I, I spent the, that time on the, on the drawing board designing and doing lettering. I mean, like this mug, yeah. I have to look at and decide how big I want those letters to be, to, to be pleasing. Yeah. And so I'm going to shade these in. They'll be much more solid in, in an hour. Uh, how long would something like that take you? That's, again, that's privileged information. Well, you must tell me. <laughs> this will take me to do that probably would be an hour and a half. When he says he doesn't think he's an artist, what is your response to that? Oh, well, I, I would disagree. <laughs> I, I believe that there is, there is an art in, in creating these treasures that he, that he, he speaks of, he says treasures, that these, these are, and there's something about you put yourself into that and you care about the emotions that are evoked in someone receiving that, and that is artistry. I, and of course the work, you only learn doing that, doing hand engraving from someone who knows and has, you know, had many, many years to, to perfect it. After years of training with brilliant engraving masters in London, and 50 years of engraving experience under his belt, Tony's favorite part will always be finishing the job and having that, wow, that looks good moment. Well, it's creative. And you're, you're making something that's very satisfying to the customers. They, uh, everybody goes out of here with happy that we've created something that, wow, you know, they didn't really know that they could get that kind of thing. Uh, so. We, we make very good product that uh, they're, they're, they're um, treasures that uh, some of the pieces we engrave, uh, they're going to be around for 100 years, more. Absolutely engrossing, Allie Banks. Now we're going to be back with more Cincy Lifestyle on the other side of the break. By the way, be sure to check us out on Facebook. We post all of our guest segments, community stories there so you can watch and share them with your friends. So be sure to like us 
follow us now, facebook.com slash Cincy Lifestyle. Stick around, we'll be right back. Quick look outside right now. Uh, as you can see, some of the uh, rain is the rain is pretty much taking a powder. Nice guys out there. Be a little coolish today, Mona. That's right. And coming up tomorrow here on Cincy Lifestyle, we answer the burning question. Does your dog like having you home all the time, <laughs> or is he stressed out by it? <laughs> we consult a local pet training expert about this and other questions. I got a funny feeling I know the answer to that. Then we're going to fire up the oven and support a local pizza place. We head to Joe's Pizza Napoli to find out more about their take and bake pizza kits. You can pick up right now. All that and a whole lot more is coming your way tomorrow right here on Cincy Lifestyle. So what's your guess about the dogs, Mona? I'm guessing that it stresses them out. That's going to be my guess. But Clyde, I really want to compliment you on the colors you're wearing today. How beautiful we look. We did not call each other. And I like your colors too, Mona. And that is Cincy Lifestyle for this Monday, April 13th on a colorful note. Be sure to remember, if you know a unique local business product we should feature, let us know at WCPO.com, 513-852-4032 or on social media. Be sure to make it a great day. Thanks for watching our video. If you liked what you saw, hit that subscribe button. You can also check out full episodes of the show you've never seen before or watch your favorites again and again. And as always, make it a great day.